Hi everybody, I'm Sarah Ockwell smith Welcome to my latest SOS parenting video. Today I'd like to talk to you about those babies, or older babies and younger toddlers, who wake up as soon as you put them down into their crib or their cot. You get very, very upset if they fall asleep in your arms and they wake up in their crib or their cot, or just generally those of you that, that, that just cannot be put down, whether that's at home with you for naps or nights, or maybe we're talking about daycare at nursery or childminder's house. But for all of those babies and very young toddlers, who will happily fall asleep in your arms, whether you're holding them upright, sitting down with them or laying down with them. And the minute you try to transfer them to their Moses basket, their crib or their cot, they get really upset and then you get no more sleep. So this is something that I'm asked to fix such a lot. And it's going to be one of those videos where I tell you, actually, the best thing to do is to not try to fix it, but try to work around it and in, in essence, make a compromise. So by fixing it, basically what I'm being asked to do is to remove those natural instincts a baby has to sleep when they're being held, because when they're being set, held, from an evolutionary perspective, they feel safe, they feel secure, because you're there, you're holding them, and they're not down on the ground where any predators can get them. Of course, there's no predators in the nursery, but you know your baby has sort of those evolutionary hangovers. So it makes sense that they feel safe and secure Cure enough to sleep, which is our most vulnerable state when they're being held. Now, obviously, you know, one of the easy solutions is to, to just hold them, particularly if we're talking about naps, to take some time out yourself. And what I coined the, the phrase contact nap several years ago. So to embrace those contact naps, you know, catch up on a Netflix series or something and just cuddle them. But obviously you can't do that all night. And also if you have other children or other things to do, as wonderful it is, as, as wonderful as it is to contact nap, you can't keep doing that. So the next thing I'd suggest is if we're talking naps, what about using a baby carrier, a sling or a wrap or something? You know, if your child is slightly older, they can even go on your back. So you have not only your hands free, but your front free. So baby wearing naps are really, really great. I've really embraced those as well. But if we're talking about the point where you really have to put them down, or we're talking at night as well, you obviously can't baby wear all night long, then how do we get around this issue with putting them down? And the simplest thing I'm going to say to you is, don't put them down. The minute we try to put them down, you imagine you're being you're falling asleep in somebody's arms, you feel safe and secure, and then you start being put downwards. Now, this downwards motion triggers a bit of a falling reflex in babies and young toddlers, and they literally wake up, often with that morrow reflex still, as if to say, what's happening? I'm falling, what's happening? So the first thing you want to try to avoid is putting them downwards. What you want to do if you want to put them somewhere is to move them sideways just or forwards. So for this, I'm saying, you know, what if you're um, on your bed and you're feeding or you're cuddling and then you've got a co-sleeper crib and you're just generally moving them sideways. You're really avoiding that putting down motion. If your crib or your cot has a side that comes off, then you could pop them in and then do the, the side up afterwards. But avoid putting down, put them in straight. Like, like you, it's, this sounds so wrong to say it, but like you were putting something into an oven. It's that sort of motion, not the downward motion. So avoid downwards. It means danger to babies and young toddlers. The next thing, and actually the thing that I would suggest most of all, is to actually avoid moving them at all once they're asleep. So if anybody does moving, once your baby or a toddler is asleep, it should be you, the parent, the adult, the carer. Because if they've gone to sleep in a position that they feel comfortable and safe and secure in, what you really want to do is to maintain that position for the duration of sleep, whether that's night or whether that's naps. So what we really want to try to aim to happen is that they go to sleep in the place they're going to spend the whole night or the whole of their nap. Now, what I'm not saying here is that whole silly put them down drowsy but awake. Technically, that should work because they're going to sleep in the position. They're not being put down. But everybody knows in reality trying to put a baby or a young toddler down drowsy but awake just doesn't work. If it does for your child, then go for it. That's brilliant. But in my experience with my own four kids and the thousands of parents I've worked with, it's just not realistic. Certainly not without a lot of crying and conventional sleep training, which is not something I advocate. 
So what I'm going to suggest instead is that you um, utilize something called a Montessori floor bed or just simply a floor bed or a mattress on the floor. If we think of something like a futon or something in Japan, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. So what we want to have is a nice firm mattress on the floor. We want to make sure that we've safety proofed. So fixing any freestanding furniture to the walls, checking any cords, things like blinds, electrical cords, crawl around on the floor and just imagine you're a baby and think, what can I get my hands on that could be hazardous? So you want to baby proof the room as much as possible um, and then you want to have a nice firm mattress and you just simply lay down and you cuddle them to sleep or you feed them to sleep and then when they're asleep you move away and they stay on that mattress for their sleep. A lot of people think well this is so strange but actually this is used a lot in daycare. In many nurseries their young um, toddlers and older babies actually take their naps on floor mats. They'll often use something like a yoga mat or sort of a padded exercise mat type thing. So it's actually really commonly utilised in childcare but we don't utilise it as much at home as parents. But the beauty of having a floor bed is that you can cuddle and feed to sleep. Your child goes to sleep in the place they're going to spend all nap or all night and once they're asleep you can kind of inch away inch away inch away a little bit and move away until eventually they've not moved that's the whole beauty of it but you can sneak away and get on with something as well and obviously that takes a little bit of practice so you might each day move away a little bit more until you've got some space between you or move away a little bit sooner i'd actually really recommend waiting until they're into a slightly deeper level of sleep so personally i wouldn't try to move away until they've been asleep for sort of 10 minutes or so because it's more likely to be successful but it works so well you know we, we overcomplicate things cribs and cots go against every sort of evolutionary bone in our body our babies and toddlers generally don't like them please don't think by the way if you are watching with a baby who does that I'm saying you're doing something wrong I'm absolutely not it's great if your child loves them but for most they really don't like them they find them very very insecure and very unsettling and trying to keep making our child use one of these cribs and cots that's so strange for them is kind of lunacy what we need to do is to think what's the problem is it me or is it my child or is it the crib or the cot the simplest thing is to remove that part of the problem and then you have the solution um, so I would really advocate that you, you, you lose the crib or cot, use the mattress out of it, but sell it on, get some cash back, get some space back and just embrace the, the, the process of either holding them wearing them or laying down with them asleep on the floor bed but if you want to know more this is covered in my the gentle sleep book the second edition um, or if you just google floor bed you'll find hundreds of results that tell you all about the safety and how to set them up i hope that's helped thanks for tuning in Bye bye